Hi class, so in this video I'm going to talk to you about intermolecular forces. These are the forces that act between particles. In this video I'm going to talk about specifically hydrogen bonding, states of matter, liquid, solid, and gas, and how to see phase changes in a kind of graph called a phase diagram. So first I'm going to talk to you about intermolecular forces. There are four kinds of intermolecular forces. They are network covalent, electrostatic or ionic, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion forces. As you can see, hydrogen bonding are a specific kind of dipole-dipole, but I'll get into that in, in a little while. These forces are listed from strongest to weakest. So the strongest are network covalent. So if you look at this image over here on the right, it shows what a network covalent structure looks like. You can imagine that each of these little balls is a carbon atom, and they're all linked together with covalent bonds. So this is what the structure of a diamond looks like. A diamond is actually one large compound containing millions and billions of carbon atoms, depending on how large the diamond is. But if you can think of each carbon atom as a particle, then each particle is connected with a covalent bond in which the electrons are being shared equally. Essentially, diamonds don't have a boiling point or a melting point because the bonds are so strong. Once you apply enough pressure and temperature, the, the bonds will just break and you won't have a diamond anymore. The next weakest bond below network covalent is electrostatic or ionic. So, so these are the attractions between ions, cations, positive ions, and negative ions, anions. In three dimensions, it looks like this. So this is what sodium chloride, table salt, looks like in three dimensions at the molecular level. Now, because the attraction between the, the positive and negative ions is so great, it takes a lot of energy to break them apart. So the melting and boiling point are really high. A dipole-dipole is an interaction between partial charges, as you can see here. So if you remember from our discussion on kinds of bonds that we did in the last quarter, in between hydrogen and chlorine in hydrochloric acid is a polar covalent bond because chlorine is slightly more electronegative than hydrogen, so it pulls on the electrons a little more, making it delta minus, which makes hydrogen delta plus. And if you have a whole bunch of hydrochloric acid molecules in the same beaker, then the positive side of one hydrochloric acid mo molecule, the hydrogen, is going to be attracted to the negative side, the chlorine side, of another hydrochloric acid molecule. So this dotted line is supposed to represent this attraction be between the partially positive and the partially negative side of two different hydrochloric acid molecules. And in this third example down below, you can see here an example of London dispersion forces, which is the weakest kind of intermolecular force. You see, this happens between two nonpolar molecules. And when these two nonpolar molecules get close to each other, for just an instant, one molecule forms a positive side in which the electrons, the negative particles, move to one side, which makes the other side positive for just an instant. And that makes a negative side on the other molecule because it forces the dipole, forces this difference in charges to occur. This is called an instantaneous dipole. And it forms when there's no other attraction occurring between molecules. So to be even more specific, a hydrogen bond is an attraction between nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine of one molecule and hydrogen of another molecule. 
So you can see that water forms hydrogen bonds. The O is delta minus, and the H is delta plus in each of these water molecules. So I won't write them all out. But you can see there's an attraction between the delta plus and the delta minus. Now it's a special kind of dipole-dipole because the oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine that's found in one molecule is small enough to have that attraction be really strong. And one hydrogen bond is really weak, but lots of hydrogen bo bonds form cohesion and attraction between molecules, which makes them stick together. And you've probably seen this where there are these kind of bugs that s can actually sit on water. Be it's because of the cohesion. Or you've seen droplets on a leaf, or you've seen droplets on a spider web, or if you've ever dropped water onto a penny and seen this little dome structure up here, it's all because of cohesion of water molecules because of the hydrogen bonding that occurs in water. So why are intermolecular forces so important? It's because when you have really strong bonds, you also have high boiling points and high melting points. It affects the physical characteristics that you can observe in substances. So starting with water here, because a pot of water, when you're boiling it, takes a lot of energy to boil, it's because of the hydrogen bonding that's occurring between the water molecules. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, and the melting point is 0 degrees Celsius. If you were to take something like salt, table salt, sodium chloride, the forces that are causing the molecules to the ions to attract are electrostatic. They're even stronger than hydrogen bonds. That's why the boiling point is 1,413 degrees Celsius, and the melting point is 801 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, if you take something which has, which is nonpolar, like methane, it's the gas that comes out of your stove at home, or it's the gas that comes out of the jets in our chemistry lab. Because the attractions are very weak, because the molecules are nonpolar, they form London dispersion forces, the boiling point is very low, negative 164 degrees Celsius, and the melting point is negative 182 degrees Celsius. It's all because of the weak intermolecular forces in methane. So since we're talking about liquid, solids, and gases, we should know what they, what they are. And we're going to do an activity in class, but I'm going to show you briefly some, a small part of it. You can see that right now we're showing a solid. You can see that the molecules are vibrating, they're tightly packed, and they form a certain shape. It's not dependent on, their, on the container they're in. They have a fixed shape, but the molecules are actually vibrating inside like your desk, for example. In liquids, molecules are still tightly packed, but they're not as tightly packed as in solids, and they're moving a little bit. No, they're not just vibrating. And, they, and the liquids form the shape of the container that they're in. And gas molecules are the least tightly packed. They form the shape of their container, and the particles are moving the fastest. As I said, in class, we will talk about how heating and cooling, as you can do right here, or cooling, causes molecules to change from one phase into another. We're also going to talk about how to read a phase diagram. A phase diagram has pressure on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. So first you have to know these lines are the separation between the three phases. So at really, really high pressure, and low temperatures, you have a solid. So you can imagine if a pressure is pushing down on you and the temperature is really low, you're going to have a solid. Now on the other hand, this A region over here, if the pressure, in general the pressure is lower and the temperature is much higher, so you're going to have a gas. And in between those two is going to be a liquid you'll be asked to know what kind of phase transition occurs from one point to another. So for example, if I said
that you had a pressure of 30 atmospheres and a temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius and you increase the temperature to 0 degrees Celsius a little above 0 degrees Celsius what phase transition occurs so you can see that the transition is occurring from the solid to a liquid so you have to think about okay what is the word for the transition from a solid to a liquid and that's called melting so the idea would be to figure out what points where the points are that the problem is asking and if it crosses one of these phase transition lines and if it does you have to be able to name it so let's go through the names in this last slide Okay. so if a solid to a gas occurs that's called sublimation a gas to a solid the opposite of sublimation is called deposition these two are pretty rare and, and don't occur usually in situations that uh, we're exposed to though if you've ever seen dry ice dry ice goes from solid to gas without a liquid state gas to liquid is called condensation this happens when you take a can of pop out of the fridge the gaseous water molecules that are in the air cool down and stick to the outside of a can you often I often hear students call this that the can is sweating the can actually isn't sweating the the water molecules that are in the air are condensing on the outside of the can because the can is cold liquid to a gas is called vaporization also known as boiling solid to liquid is called melting and liquid to solid is called freezing so that generally summarizes what you have to know in the intermolecular forces section of this class please write down questions that you have and I'll be happy to answer them see you in class